Kurt, I am your father. <laughs> oh, he killed me. Okay, well now we've had our fun uh, doing a shameless rip-off of a very popular sci-fi series that I can't say the name of or somebody will sue me for copyright. It's time to service the rattlesnake cage. Now for us this is instantaneous, for you it's probably been a week, four days, I don't know we're going to release these. But you've hopefully already seen our tour of this rack and you saw one cage that was, well, disgusting because somebody decided to shed and take a huge crap. So now it's time to fix that problem. Is your phone ringing? Yeah. We're back. So now Kurt has to edit out his phone ringing for a second because we're really professional here. You know, it's funny. It's for human beings. This is what it is. We've got our bucket. And this bucket is empty. We can go ahead and open it by hand. We're going to set that there. You already saw that Kurt had his lightsaber hook. I'm going to pull his tongs over here closer to him. Just in case he needs them. You got them? Cool. Because again, I have everything ready. One of the things you do when you go to service a rattlesnake cage or any venomous cage is before you do it, you just make sure you have everything you need. Because the last thing I want to do is start dealing with the snake and then have to think, oh, I don't have this. I need to get that. And then your detention is divided. And divided attention is a bad thing when you're doing this. Fortunately, if you know me in real life, you know I can talk while I do anything. So that part's not going to be a problem. So let's get rolling. Really pretty snake, really disgusting tub. All right, it's time to clean the snake tub. Well, the first thing we're going to try to do is I like to try to see if it will cooperate with me on the hook. And usually it does. This actually is one of my most difficult diamondbacks to work with. It's just really jumpy, and it tends to dart off of the hook. Yeah, come on, I don't have you the way I want you. See? Well, it likes to fall. So let's do a hook and tail. There we gotcha. There we gotcha. Drop it in there. I don't always like them to flip over like that, but again, I'd rather do that than try to dart it. So we got it in there. We can just simply lock it down. Bam! It's locked in. All right. Now, I don't know if Kurt's going to want to film me cleaning that poop, but you can see why we're doing this. We've got a little bit of just old sand and it looks like some fecal matter and skin in there. We've got an old shed and we've got some poops. So it is time to clean this cage. So we're going to take a quick pause and we'll be right back with a nice fresh cage. We'll put the snake back. All right, through the magic of us hitting pause, this magically cleans itself. So we're going to go ahead and put it back. All the big poops gone, skin's out, water dish is clean. We're going to set that there. Again, the snake's still in the bucket, right? So grabbing things by hand, no big deal. Get her water. I guess I could have done a better job right there on the front. My hand for pumping is strong. <laughs> we fill the water dish. It's kind of the boring part. I'll do a water dish fill dance that makes it better. Okay, there we go. Now we're almost ready to put the snake in, but before we do that, I got something else cool to show you. We'll slide that closed. Remember, no snake in that one, so I'm using my hand. Now we're going to go back to following Tom Crutchfield's three rules. We don't open the cage with our hand. I believe it was this guy we took the water dish out of. I really like these water dishes because I can literally put a hook on them sometimes. There we go. And then I can set it in there with my tool. And with a little bit of luck. over. Sometimes this works smoother than others. There we go. One of these placed back in. Whoop! Drop my hook. That'll happen. That's why you always carry multiple tools. And then what I'll do is I'll pick my hook back up while that's closed. Just because I like the hook better for grabbing it. So now we can just crack this open. Have to make some more noise. Just enough to put water in. Not enough of the snake come striking out. 
not putting my hands over it. What was that? I blew my pressure valve? Yeah. We actually blew our pressure valve. Let me tell you, whenever something makes a really loud weird hiss sound. You have to screw this back in. Which back in? Oh, this? It blew that off? Yeah. Wow, so the failure actually wasn't even the valve. The failure was my hose. Look at that. Interesting. When your equipment breaks in the middle of doing a video. But, this actually brings up a very important thing. While I fix this, if it'll fix. And that is, when something goes awry, first thing you do is secure your snake. I don't go see what the sound was. It makes us all jump a little bit because it's a really loud pop sound when you're working with a venomous snake. And I realized it wasn't a snake. No, why am I? Now my water's stuck on. Come on. I don't think I'm pressuring too much of anything. Why are we still... Hey, we're back! After an equipment failure, I got my water thing fixed. Like I was saying, the important thing, when you do have some kind of equipment failure, like my water breaking, is you don't freak out, lock the snake up, then figure out the problem. Don't diagnose a problem with the snake out. Take care of problem one first. Take care of the thing that can hurt you, which in this case was the snake. So we locked him up, and now we can go back to putting water in the dish. Oh, man, cough on full of water. Oops. Okay, so that gauge ready to go. Now it's time to, I believe it was this one that's empty? Yep. Time to fill this cage with a rattlesnake. So what we'll do now, we'll get that out of the way. Kurt, you got your tools? Yep. See, Kurt says he does, but he really doesn't because his hook's over here. Or his uh, tongs are over here. Don't beat Kurt in this case. Actually check and make sure you have your tools. Do you have your hook, Kurt? Yep. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. Because again, I want to make sure that your equipment's all ready to go where you want it. All mine is. So now what I can do, put this where I want it. And now we're going to go ahead and loosen this. And we can grab that loop with the hook. Never put ourselves at risk. So now you can see the snake. It's in there. I've done some videos before. This is one of my favorite of the albinos. Really nice rattle there. Really long, like, huge rattle. And just really beautiful colors. Hey, look, you did good that time, buddy. And he goes back in there. And we're done. Cage service. And they, we even had some like equipment failures we didn't plan. But you see, <coughs> for all the craziness that venomous snakes tend to have, as long as you just follow your rules and you take your precautions, it's really more about going slow and methodical than it is about being some kind of crazy dangerous person. If you're wanting to be a crazy dangerous person, I wouldn't recommend working with these guys. But if you can be slow and methodical and think through your problems and just, you know, always keep your distances, always use your tools, Follow the Tom Crutchfield rules, right? We don't service a cage with a snake inside it. It's like when we were going to clean that cage, we took it out. We don't open the tub with our hands with a snake in it. We always use a hook or a tool. And then uh, rule number three was, Kurt, what was it? Uh, don't grab the snake behind the head. Uh, you know, it's just kind of foolish, and you need to have a lot of experience to do that. There you go. So, see, I have to test Kurt there, see if he was paying attention. He was. So that's the three rules. You follow those three, you can do this and be okay. That being said, don't say I've never owned a reptile. I'm going to go out and get a Western Diamond back. Start with something else first. But if this is something you're into, I'm a big believer in personal freedom. But do check your local laws and be careful. Be very careful. But it is, a, it is something that if you want to do, I think that people should be able to do with the right experience. I don't mind people like having licensing issues as long as the governments will actually issue them, which is a problem in some places. But I won't get into that. It's a story for the day. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the last two videos where we showed you all of these and we showed you how we service one and showed you how we use our tools with the bucket, the watering system, the hook, and the tong. Uh, maybe we'll do another video if we have an issue like some stuck shed where we'll tube one and show you how we do that. But I'm not going to tube a snake unless I need to because it's a little stressful for him. Alright, Kurt, any questions? Nope. Alright guys, 
Thanks for watching. And now we'll get back to showing ball pythons. And the reason we'll get back to showing ball pythons is I'm going to put this video up. And it's going to get half as many views as a ball python video. I don't know why that is, but it does. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.